Vsauce! Kevin here. 27 years before Superman flew in to save the day with alien powers, Nyklatope had bionic abilities. First published in 1911 and considered one of the first superheroes, Nyklatope had an artificial heart and night vision color shifting eyes. He was a cyborg 50 years before that word even existed. In the September 1960 issue of Astronautics, Manfred Kleins and Nathan Klein first used the word cyborg to describe a cybernetic organism. Their motivation was to propose a conceptual revolution. Instead of building artificial environments to survive in extraterrestrial locations, why not upgrade our bodies on Earth to adapt to what we find through space exploration? After half a century of research, we may not be ready to walk around Mars in our underwear, but there are cyborgs among us, and millions more are on the way. Mind-controlled robotic arms are a reality. They work by remapping the nerve endings that control the hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder to existing muscle groups, and then programming a prosthetic limb to react to the input. We're years away from ordering bionic limbs off Amazon, but a bionic eye is commercially available. The Argus II, named after a Greek mythological giant with a hundred eyes, is a retinal prosthesis system that restores some sight to the blind. It features a video camera attached to glasses that send images as electrical signals, which are processed and delivered wirelessly to electrodes implanted on the retina. Patients go from complete darkness without it to seeing flashes of light which allows them to navigate their home, cross streets, or in the case of Larry Hester, see his wife for the first time in 33 years. More common mechanical systems that help restore lost biological functions include pacemakers, which help control abnormal heart rhythms, and cochlear implants, which are essentially bionic ears that deliver signals directly to nerve fibers so the brain can process them as sound. But the world's first government-recognized cyborg is Neil Harbison, who has an antenna on his head that allows him to hear colors. He was born only able to see in grayscale, so he had an antenna integrated within the occipital bone of his skull that picks up colors with a sensor and translates them to sounds that he hears through bone conduction. Harbison successfully petitioned the British government to recognize the Iborg as part of his body, and was allowed to include it in his passport photo. These are all technologies we have today. Currently in development is an injectable neural lace that could lead to connecting our brains wirelessly to the internet, and the observation of neurons in the medial temporal lobe that drive the formation of memories. Which means that someday we could literally download knowledge. While we can 3D bioprint human skin, synthetic skin to shield us from cosmic radiation is a ways off, let alone artificial lungs to breathe Martian air that's 96% carbon dioxide. But with continued progress on small blood pumping motors designed to replace human hearts, and biohackers having developed eye drops that temporarily give humans night vision, Nyklatope could be roaming the streets any day now. And as always, thanks for watching.